Goku and Ruta have entered new chapters of their lives, and have finally reunited. But this reunion has another sibling, as Raditz arrives on Earth. We'll be covering all that and more in this third part of What If Goku Had a Twin. The first thing Ruta asks is where Raditz has been all these years, as well as what happened to their family. Weren't they supposed to come here and get them? Raditz explains that he was with Frieza's army, and that planet Vegeta was destroyed. So, every Saiyan there is dead, except for three other Saiyans. Him, Vegeta, and Nappa, as well as these two. There's definitely no other Saiyans out there, like no secret brother for Vegeta, and no mutant Saiyans on some deserted planet. Definitely not. Well, that at least gives Ruta some sort of closure because now she knows what happened. She wasn't yearning to meet her parents, or Raditz for that matter, in the first place. She was just really curious as to what happened because something clearly did happen. At least now she knows, but that leaves the question, why is Raditz here now? Why did it take so long and what made him come here in the first place? The meeting slowly starts to go bad as Raditz explains what he wants. He also learns that Kakarot hit his head, but did Ruta hit her head too? She remembers her name and clearly remembers the fact that she's a Saiyan, so what's her excuse? Actually, Goku does remember some of his past thanks to Ruta. He just embraces Earthling name and she never decided to get one. Earth has changed the two of them, and they're not like the Saiyans that Raditz wants. If this is what being a Saiyan means, they completely reject it. It's so strange. Ruta knew that Saiyans were warriors, but not like this. They're just space war criminals. Goku also clearly never cared much or thought much about the Saiyans, but this really cements the fact that he doesn't align with them. Raditz gives his demands one more time and also threatens them. He also notices a kid there. Interesting. Whose kid is this? They're co-mingling with the Earthlings. Goku immediately steps up to protect Gohan, and that answers it for Raditz. Kakarot has a son. A half Saiyan. He assumes Root is the same as well. And then Krillin steps up. He's gonna stand beside them no matter what. In the original story, he did initially try and stand up to Raditz. But here he could actually tell Raditz is a threat too, and this is basically part of him not being cowardly anymore. He's made it a goal to be more brave like this. And of course he's gonna team up with his wife and best friend. Ruta says if they're gonna fight, they're gonna take it away from here. Because clearly it's gonna become a fight eventually. That's fine. Once Raditz beats them, he'll drag them back to this place and watch him destroy Kame House. Actually, he'll have them watch everything. He'll kill all life on this planet. Unless they do decide to join him, of course. He'll be back for Gohan as well. Raditz heads off and the three of them follow him. One thing I actually didn't know in the past few parts is that Ruta can't ride Nimbus. Not that it matters much because she could fly here, but Goku can use it, not her. And besides the obvious fact that Ruta's here, Krillin's joining too. But as they fly over, somebody else starts to fly alongside them. It's Piccolo. He actually has been watching this whole time, and he joins for the same reasons as usual. He did encounter Raditz before as well. And whether they like it or not, they can't beat Raditz alone. The collective power of the four of them should be enough though. So they all arrive on the battlefield with Raditz surprised to see someone else joins. And he laughs it off. Four of them are needed to fight him. That really proves that they're not confident. Sure, he's outnumbered, but he could definitely handle this. Goku, Krillin, and Ruta jump him together. With Piccolo also landing some attacks, but slowly backing away. The others know what he's up to, but as for Raditz, he thinks Piccolo's retreating. That's smart. He knows he can't win here. Let's briefly cover some powers too. Just for Goku, Ruta, and Krillin. Goku's at a power level of 600, the strongest of our protagonists. Not too far behind him is Ruta at 550. She's pretty close to catching up to Goku, especially because he did have to take some time to raise Gohan. For her, she's been doing a lot more training. And this also affects Krillin, who's at 400, the strongest Earthling here. Piccolo's power is the same, and of course, with all four of them combined, they do overpower Raditz but that's only together. Individually, they can't do much, but along the way, they made some plans. Piccolo's charging some attack right now, so he can't fight. It's up to the three of them to hold Raditz off. Ruta had another idea along the way too. Go for Raditz's tail. Her and Goku's tail are actually weak spots still. They haven't really trained with it much, and neither of them have gotten control on grade eight because they haven't turned into grade apes, at least not since Goku last did. But theoretically, Raditz's tail should be a weak point too, and it definitely is. Ruta goes for it and is able to get Raditz in place. The fight stops for a bit, with Raditz trying to convince her to let him go. Goku buys his reasoning, but Ruta doesn't really buy it. She doesn't have a problem with killing Raditz, but she prefers not to do it. They should just stop this fight here. Raditz takes offense to this because that implies they can kill him. They can't. He stops with his lies and immediately goes back to threatening them. And he says even if he's defeated here somehow, it won't matter. The other two Saiyans will come for them. It would be much better for them if they just joined the Saiyan side. Through the pain, Raditz moves one of his arms, punching Ruta right in the face. Freeing himself. He then quickly swings around, rapidly breaking one of her arms. Goku and Krillin rush to him, but each with one fist, he knocks them down. Ruta gets back up, fighting with one arm. Also trying to go for his tail again, but he then instead grabs hers. That's not going to work twice, and she has to remember she has the same weakness. Using her tail, he lifts her up, then slams her into the ground, knocking her unconscious and taking her out of the fight. Goku then gets back up, rapidly attacking him, but Raditz dodges or parries all of his attacks. He then tries to go for Goku's tail as well, but he knows to look out for that. 
wrapping it around his waist like Raditz does. Raditz counters with his own combo, a Dynamite Monday. Goku simply can't keep up. And he's already a bit injured as is, so this does the job. Raditz then jumps up in the air, charging a double Sunday, ready to launch one at Ruta and one at Goku. But then a disc of energy flies past him, a Kienzon from Krillin. So he stops charging the attack and then lands back on the ground. He should have ran away like that Namekian. Wait, Namekian? What? He doesn't know what Raditz is talking about. Not that it matters. Raditz slowly walks up to Krillin, just intimidating him. It's a shame Raditz has to kill his brother and sister, especially with them being Saiyans. But for his brother-in-law, he doesn't really care. This kind of does terrify Krillin because, yeah, the fact didn't even hit him that this guy is his brother-in-law. As Raditz slowly and intimidatingly walks up to him, Krillin jumps back, trying to charge a Kamehameha. He launches a full power blast at Raditz. And Raditz simply stands in place, countering with his own, only using one hand. Krillin's power does flare up briefly from this attack too, and it's impressive for an Earthling, but it's not going to be enough to save Kakarot and Ruda. And Krillin kind of knows that. He's just glad Raditz is standing in one place. At the very last millisecond, Raditz' scouter goes off, detecting something else near him. He tries to jump out of the way, but it's already too late. First, he takes the full brunt of Krillin's attack. But more importantly, a beam is sent flying right through his side. Piccolo's standing there, not too far away. He went a bit further back, and he did have to conceal himself. But this whole time, he's been charging the special beam cannon. Although, with the Raditz having a little bit extra reaction time, this isn't a critical blow. So, Raditz doesn't die from it, but it does take him out of the fight. He collapses to the ground with a hole in his side. Krillin then runs over to Ruta, and Goku gets back up too. He didn't lose consciousness. Ruta wakes up too, and the four of them walk over to Raditz. Krillin asks them, So, uh, what are they doing now? Piccolo has a pretty smart idea. Just kill him. This is the perfect opportunity. But Goku thinks they shouldn't, and Ruta also doesn't necessarily want to. Krillin's inclined to agree with both of them, and Piccolo's not sure why they want to keep him alive. Well, for Krillin, he actually did want to kill Raditz at first, but he trusts Ruta and Goku's judgment more than his own. It is their brother, after all. He's not going to go against what his best friend wants, and especially not what his wife wants. Goku thinks it would be a waste of a great warrior to just kill him like that. As for Ruta, she thinks it's important to keep him alive because, first of all, he can give some more information. He said there were two other Saiyans out there, and they're going to come here too. And Raditz reiterates that. That's exactly right. Nothing they do will save them now. Well, that's more of a reason to keep him alive. And besides, who's to say they can't get him on their side? Piccolo thinks that's ridiculous, but he also realizes the irony in that because he just teamed up with them. Although he clarifies, this is a one-time thing, and it's only to prevent the Saiyans from taking over Earth, because Earth is his to take over. Yeah, right. But either way, for all those reasons, they decide not to kill him just yet. If they need to, they will. And they're not going to heal him either. Raditz proclaims that this wound won't stop him. He'll just heal from it on his own. If they think this is going to kill him, it won't be enough. And it's a good thing he confirmed that. Alright, they'll just leave him as is. And Raditz warns them again of the Saiyans. In one year's time, they will be here. And he'll be sure to join those two in fighting them. To make sure he doesn't leave either, Ruta then goes for a spaceship and picks it up, with her and Krillin flying back to Kami House. You know, maybe this will be a nice gift for Bulma. Ruta's sure she'll find some fun with this. Without saying a word, Piccolo goes off on his own preparing to train. Not only will he kill those Saiyans, he'll kill Ruta and Goku. This battle showed him that he's still behind the two of them. The last one left with Raditz is Goku, and Raditz questions why they're like this. Goku says Earth made them this way, and he's really glad he didn't turn out to be like Raditz, nor did Ruta. Raditz blamed it on Goku hitting his head, but honestly, he doesn't think that's the case. It's the people around him that made him this way, because, again, he does actually remember his past thanks to Ruta. Look at Ruta, too. She didn't bump her head. She's like this. And Goku says if Raditz ever does want to join them, he'll welcome it. And he lets Raditz know his honest thoughts. Their sister was always curious about their past. But as for Goku, he'd rather not kill such a strong opponent and let his strength go to waste. He looks forward to fighting Raditz again. Hopefully, they'll fight alongside each other next time and they could even grow further if he decides to train and join them. Either way though, he'll see Raditz soon. He's sure he'll come around and maybe even stop being the way he is. Raditz is left alone in the middle of nowhere. And he can't heal from this, but it still is incredibly painful. Weirdly enough, about a day later, somebody comes back to see him. It's Ruta. She gives him half of a senzu bean. This won't fully heal him, but it's gonna ensure he's just not in excruciating agony over here. Not only would that just be cruel, but Raditz really won't be inclined to join them if they just leave him like this. She then flies off. Raditz does heal up from it, but only partially. It still is incredibly painful, and he does have a huge scar. But he can't really do anything against them. First of all, he can't fight them, he's too weak right now. And second of all, he can't even leave because they took his spaceship. He's stuck here. And you know, he does wonder. While those two are weak, they became pretty powerful for this relatively weak planet. The gravity here is low, the power of the population is low, everything about it. And they're so kind-hearted, but still, they did become good warriors, even though they're individually weaker than him. How strong can a low-class Saiyan like him truly grow? He tried to kill these two, and they let him live. Vegeta and Nappa show no regard for him in general. Plus, now that he thinks about it, 
If they come to this planet and see Raditz here still alive, they're probably going to try and kill him, either thinking he betrayed them or that he failed his mission. So what now? As Raditz is left to his own devices, everyone else trains in preparation for the Saiyans. Goku begins to train Gohan, but then realizes it might be better for him to start with Roshi. So Gohan does get some training here, but it's with a different teacher, because Piccolo's on his own and he has no reason to train Gohan right now. Ruta and Krillin of course work together, and as for the other Earthlings, they train on Kami's lookout. But Kami then mentions a good idea for Goku, Ruta, and Krillin. They've done the highest level of training on this Earth. Krillin actually did go to see Kami over these past five years, so this includes him as well. There is a higher god that they can go to, and normally he wouldn't say this, but the guy actually contacted him. King Kai got in contact with Kami because he saw the Saiyans coming to Earth. So, Kami wants the three to train with King Kai. There is an issue though. First of all, they would have to go to Otherworld. As living beings, it's not impossible, but it's just harder because usually that's for dead people. But also they have to go across Snake Way, which takes way too long. And as living people, they can't feasibly go across Snake Way. They'll starve. Unless they bring a bunch of food with them, and then in that case, it's going to take too long. They need to train to cross Snake Way first, and then they can go to see King Kai. So that's exactly what they do, even going to the time chamber for a bit, only for about two months. This way they can get ahead on their training and make sure they make it to King Kai's in time. Piccolo's training on his own also goes pretty well, but he also realizes that he might not be growing too much on his own. It might be better to have someone to train with. Going with Raditz is too risky. Honestly, he doesn't even know if the guy died yet. He probably did. So there's the next best option, going to Kami's lookout. They think at first he's trying to attack, but really, he does actually want to train up here. Yamcha, Tenshinhan, and Chaozu will be great punching bags for him. Obviously, they're not going to be treated like that. But the three actually do spar with him for a bit, and they do pretty well against him, especially Ten. It's like a Raditz situation. Piccolo is stronger than them individually, but collectively, they do overpower him. He realized this training might be more beneficial than he once thought, and hopefully the other three come back soon enough to train with him. A year passes. Vegeta and Nappa arrive on Earth. Goku, Ruta, and Krillin actually do get back in time, thanks to Krillin suggesting that they leave early because they need some time to travel across Snake Way. So, they make it back in time. They meet up with Ten, Yamcha, and Chaozu, as well as Piccolo. And Goku asks Piccolo if he's seen anything about Raditz, and Piccolo says he doesn't care about Raditz. He didn't even bother to check on him. Well, he couldn't have left Earth, and clearly he hasn't been causing any chaos, so Ruta wonders what he's been up to. Honestly, Krillin thinks it's better that they haven't seen him. That guy rubs him the wrong way. Vegeta and Nappa greet their opponents. They're not going to be the first ones to fight, though. They plant some Cybermen, sicken them on the group. They doubt the Earthlings will be able to beat them. Maybe those two Saiyans will be able to make it out. Sure, they might have beat Raditz, but taking on all the Cybermen at once, that's going to be too much for them. And that's weird, they said it like they killed Raditz. Goku and Ruta didn't kill Raditz. Don't the Saiyans know he's alive right now? Unless he actually hasn't contacted them recently. Actually, that would mean he hasn't contacted them at all. They can't focus on that now. Instead of questioning it, they get ready to fight the Cybermen. But they hear a shout from not too far away. Two purple beams come down to the sky above, being dragged across the battlefield, killing all the Cybermen. A man with long hair then drops down to the ground in front of them, breathing heavily but then standing up. He's happy. That attack worked. He really has grown stronger. Vegeta and Nappa don't know who they're looking at at first, and same for the rest of the group. But Goku and Ruta could sense his energy, and they could also tell by the long hair, especially once he turns around and see the giant scar on his side. The man looking back at them with a menacing grin? It's Raditz, looking almost unrecognizable. But why did he fight the Cybermen? Is he here to join the Saiyans, or is he here to maybe fight against them? Honestly, Raditz himself isn't even too sure right now. Yup, we're doing Biker Raditz again. And with that, we end off here for now. What'd you guys think about this part, and what's gonna happen next? Leave your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think. As usual, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help with the channel, and it shows me you want to see more videos like this. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.